Welcome to the Ultimate Rome Vlog, where my family and I explore Rome for a solid six full days. I decided to combine my two vlogs because I originally broke this up into two parts, and now for your viewing pleasure, I decided to put this all into one epic Rome Vlog. So continue to eat and explore Rome with us as I take you to all of my favorite places in the Eternal City. Hello! Forgive my appearance, but we just arrived in Roma at our Airbnb. We actually have a very nice and spacious Airbnb. This is our nice room. It's so spacious. We're already making it a little bit messy as we're coming in. Just a little tidbit of advice that I wanted to give you that was of course given to us and we know just from experience. If you're arriving with the train, so if you're arriving at Termini Station, it should not cost more than, I mean, you have to ask them to use the taxi meter so basically you want to pay with the meter you don't want to pay by cash you don't want someone to say oh where are you standing how many people yada yada we almost got ripped off by some guy he's like oh how many are you four oh four luggage okay yeah come come you'll fit and then we're like ah oh, can we use the taxi meter and he's like oh no well where are you going we said uh our location which is right in the center and he's like oh that'll cost you 45 euros we ended up paying i think it was like 16 euros to get to the center with our luggage included. So do not pay 45 euros from the train station to anywhere in the center. Anywhere in the center should cost you under 20 euros, anywhere in the center. With the taxi meter, usually a taxi driver will charge you maybe, maybe a euro extra per luggage and that's it. And then when you're in the center, anywhere from the center to the airport and vice versa should cost you 50 euros. No more than that. Maybe sometimes they'll charge you a euro or two extra per bag. That's it. You should not be paying any more than 50 euros to get anywhere in the center to the airport. This is just my little PSA because I want to warn you guys so you don't get ripped off because it's very easy to get scammed in Europe, especially if you're a tourist and you've never been before. You don't know the rules. It's, it's pretty sad actually, but yeah. Wait, Today uh, is day one so in Roma. It is September 1st and it's actually so fresh out. Yeah. I thought it would be hotter in Rome than other places, but it's actually more fresh, which is super nice. So yeah, let's do a nice little walk. We are steps literally like... Let's go steps away from Castel oh, Sant'Angelo of our Airbnb That's so just I'm just going to show you here. exactly what I'm looking at yeah Castel Sant'Angelo is famous for being the tomb of the emperor of Hadrian and to the left of Castel Sant'Angelo <laughs> is San Pietro <laughs> what do you think so far it's stunning it's really large very wide <laughs> in every concept um we'll more to see yes this is like our first five minutes being out on the streets of Rome and it's beautiful. Yeah, we walked beautiful. out and see this huge monuments beautiful. all over the place. Yes, and then we're going for pizza and pasta at a restaurant nearby, so hopefully that's good. Ciao, Julia. Ciao. Where Buonasera. are we? Where are we tonight? We are in Rome, guys. We finally made it here three years later, pretty much. <laughs> and we're back in Rome. We're having a delicious pizza at Mariuccia. And guys, it looks so good. It's all like Napoletan. It's this Looks is pizza amazing. napoletan, not the Romano one tonight, but should she'll be film really the good. food when it comes. I'll show you. We did get a classic Romano dish, which I'll show you. Carbonara. And this is a croquet with potato. It's a potato croquet, so keep it. It's a potato What's croquet it? with this ricotta cheese? and salami. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Wow, look at this. Right, guys, it's huge. Just look at my finger. That looks epic. Mm. Oh my god. Look at what's inside this. Oh my god. This is la filiata. Oh my god, it's filled with just more. Oh my god, it's filled with the balls. Yes, that's the little balls. That's what it is. That's why it's called filiata because it's like the babies. No, isn't that yes, like I kids? think so. I told you it's just like a baby. It's filiata. Oh my god. This pizza dog, like, it's worth coming just for this pizza. This restaurant is a relatively new restaurant for us and in general it opened up recently and safe to say it's one of our favorites. Would I be in Rome if I didn't show you Giordano Bruno? <laughs> now I'm showing Nikita my favorite statue. <laughs> I wanted to take Nikita to see one of my favorite piazzas, Piazza Navona. Marvel at the beautiful statues, the three statues here, and just enjoy the view. Yeah, Look behind me! The beautiful Pantheon. I think this is Piazza della Rotonda, I believe. 
beautiful. Look at this history. Guys, who needs a museum when you're here? It's just right behind you. <laughs> it's so nice to be back in Rome. Guys, like, I got goosebumps literally seeing I this. Know. It's just like, it's There's just from every corner. It, yeah. It's like, you're just like astounded. It's crazy. just something about Rome, you know? Something about something Rome. About Rome. <laughs> so when we're at the Pantheon, we always get this gelato fiocco di neve. It was so good. It's still amazing. The specifically Zabayone flavor is really good. But the other gelatos look very touristy, piled high. And I was reading and they were saying that like the gelato that they make there, artigianale, is Zabayone flavor, ariso flavor that they didn't have in something else. So Zabayone is still made there. That's why I just got Zabayone. The rest are very touristy. So I was kind of disappointed by this place because it used to be my favorite, but the Zabayone still tastes amazing. It's honestly to this day my favorite Zabayone flavor gelato from any gelateria, but it's looking like a tourist trap now, guys. So it's kind of sad. Mm. But it's incredible. This was a small three euro cup. And it was larger. Larger than anything. Yeah. Make a wish. And throw. Whenever I'm in Rome, I'm definitely sure to throw at least one coin into the Trebi Fountain. That guarantees you return to Rome, and it's worked for me since 2010, so I'm not stopping. We're walking through Campo de Fiore to get to our cafe. So conveniently, we decided to grab a cappuccino, a coffee, some pastries at Roscioli Cafe. Right down the street from the cafe, there's also the Forno, which has the pizza and even more pastries. If you're more of a savory person for breakfast, I highly recommend checking out the Forno. You can grab a coffee at the cafe, take it over to the Forno, get some pizza, and even get some more delicious pastries from the Forno, in my opinion. So we got some mortadella, this one looks really good with stracciatella and cheese, and this is the suplit. How was it? How was it? Oh, that looks good. Mm. So Jules got this little crostata with chocolate mm. chips and ricotta. I'm in heaven. You're in heaven. This is so you. This is like your favorite. Guys, it's amazing. Always from Roscioli. So good. Uh, we had breakfast at the Roscioli Cafe. We had a good cornetta, but honestly, I think I'm coming here tomorrow. Mm. So good. I was really excited to take Nikita into the Roman Pantheon. This is a very special monument and it is super old, built between 25 and 27 BC, that is before Christ. This monument has the greatest number of records, some of which being the best preserved, the biggest brick dome in the history of architecture, and the forerunner of all modern places of worship. It is the most copied and imitated of all ancient works. The name Pantheon comes from two Greek words, pan, meaning everything, and theon, meaning divine. As you can see, it is truly a divine creation. The tomb of the king and Margarita. So she's in here. How did they build this? Like the size, the magnitude is just insane. Feels uh, like I'm in VR. Yeah. <laughs> You don't see things yeah. like this in real life. No, you don't. It's true. Yeah, there's also some important people buried here, like the king Vittorio Emanuele II and La Regina Margherita, who they named the Pizza Margherita after. So it's really, really interesting to see. There's also Raffaello, the painter, the artist. So it's very, very cool to be inside the Pantheon. We are at Cafe San Pistacchio, and we're getting a nice cafe Moretto. My this is favorite. One of the best coffee places in Rome, guys. You gotta try it out. So the Moretto is one euro and ninety cents. So that's all. And you can ask for it without or with Grazie. 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 Mm, look how delicious. Cheers. So behind me is the Largo di Torre Argentina, and this is the spot that is believed to have been the place of the assassination of Julius Caesar, and now it's a cat place. As I said, this square is now a famous cat sanctuary where it provides a home for many of the stray cats. As well, this area or sacred area has the remains of four of the oldest temples in the capital, dedicated to a goddess of fountains, a goddess of fortune, a goddess of fertility, and a goddess of the protector of sailors. So we're in the Capitoline Hill of Piazza Venezia. Fun fact, this Piazza del Campidoglio was designed by Michelangelo. And over here, we can see the Capitoline she-wolf with Romulus and Remus. Ciao, buongiorno, or should I say buon pomeriggio. It's the afternoon and we're here at the Roman Forum, the Foro Romano. Behind me is the Arco di Settimo Severo. 
And this Roman Forum was used as basically the center of ancient Rome where everything would happen, the meeting place of people, important religious events would happen here. It was just the coolest place, the place to be, right behind me. How stunning is this? Oh. Honestly, there's like no tourists here. It's incredible. So this is my favorite spot of ancient Rome where the Foro Romano is. And it's absolutely free to just chill here by these ancient ruins. Do you understand how big this arc is? <laughs> From one arc to the next, we walked from this arc all the way to the Arco di Constantino, which can only mean one thing. We are heading to see the Colosseum, but more on that later. Colosseum! Whoa! Whoa. What do you think? Stunning. Gladiators. Good. Really big. <laughs> Sizey. So the holes that you see in the Colosseum that look like they can almost be giant bullet holes, these are due to the removal of the iron clamps throughout the centuries. When the Colosseum was once considered a ruin, they would just take the iron clamps and use them elsewhere. So that's why there's a lot of holes in this section of the Colosseum. You can see this little section looks new because it was clearly a chunk missing. So they designed a new area. And this is just, yeah, it was basically just ruins back in the day. Now these runes are historical and they try their best to preserve them as much as they can. We're yes. taking a break. Yes, where we are. We're taking a break. Ooh. Right by the Coliseum. Beautiful. What's your impression of it? Does it live up to the hype? Yes, but I have to see it inside. Yeah, we will. We're gonna, we're gonna make it a point in, to see inside yeah. and even the Foro Romano, Vatican Museum. These are some of Nikita's requests, so... I have a list. I have to deliver. Seen the inside of the Colosseum since like 2010, so I'm actually curious to go back inside again. Nice, beautiful, nice, nice, wow, ciao, ciao, from il Colosseo, how beautiful. Cheers, babe, with your Negroni by il Colosseo. How is it? Very good, delicious. Negronis in Rome are uh, top notch, strong, yeah. Roman vacation. Yes. Cheers. Your favorite thing, cheers. A coffee? Two. His coffee. two favorite things, coffee. Negroni. Negroni. To go, coffee to The stay. only missing is a gassy water. Yeah. <laughs> that will come later. That will come. All of that sightseeing is bound to make anyone hungry. So we went home, did a quick change, and then we had Rezzo's for one of our favorite spots, Tonarello. Here we get to try one of my favorite places for carbonara, but first we have some fritti misti and a few other appetizers. Wow. Buonasera, we are in Trastevere and we're eating at Tonarello, one of our favorite restaurants for carbonara. And I'm very excited because I also just had those delicious souplis, as you saw, some souplis, potato croquets, a little fried things. For my main, I'm getting with Jules and Attic Split as their app, I'm getting the polpette with cacio e pepe. And Jules confirms that they're amazing. I've been seeing them online and they look so good, so I'm really excited. When Nikita and I eat out, we love to share dishes, so we definitely shared this delicious, heavenly carbonara. But don't miss out on these polpette, they are cacio e pepe meatballs, and they're so good. And when in Trastevere, I highly recommend to visit this beautiful church. This is the Basilica Santa Maria in Trastevere. The interior gives the illusion that it came from the Orthodox, not Catholics. However, this was probably the first official place of Christian worship in Rome, and it is one of the oldest churches in Rome. The basic floor plan and wall structure of the church date back to the 340s. Nikita was very moved by this church. And here I am still thinking about our last meal. So we just went into this church, Santa Maria in Trastevere, after our delicious meal at Tonarello. And we realized that Tonarello has two locations now. So we ate at, I think, the newer location. We were like getting so tripped out because we're like, is this where it was before? Everything's changing in Rome, but some things are definitely changing, but they opened another location probably because it's that good. So how good was that meal? Very good. I think you said you'd eat it twice. Twice. We'll come back here. <laughs> he wants to come okay. back and eat at Tonarello. It's just go there and get exactly what we ordered. So that's the church. This is the main piazza of Trastevere, Santa Maria in Trastevere. Hello. <laughs> it's raining today. We are at Roscioli. You can see. 
Guys, this freaking ricotta cake with visually, I think it's like black cherry. It's the most amazing cake. You can see, not that bad. Okay. This cake, highly recommend. Where are we? Uh, at the Vatican Museum. We just walked in. We walked into the Vatican. Yes. I believe the cost to get into the Vatican Museum typically is about 17 euros. However, many guides recommend to buy a skip the line ticket ahead of time, which cost us around, I'm going to say about 30 euros a person. You're going to see in a second just why I was a little bit fed up with the Vatican Museum. Hello, today we are at the Vatican Museum. <laughs> We're not that happy because it's so hot. It's like, there's no air conditioning in the Vatican Museum. They have some windows open, some like little tiny air conditioning units. I'm sweating. All this money the Vatican has and I can't afford to make the air conditioning in the Vatican Museum strong. Like, come on, turn on the AC. Everyone's sweating buckets in there. So we're slowly but sweating our way through the Vatican Museum. I'll show you some interesting artwork as we go, but I just have to say I'm very unimpressed with the Vatican for not putting the AC on in the Vatican Museum. Like, what the heck? Yes, despite the fact that it had rained earlier, it was extremely hot that day and being inside the museum really felt like a form of torture at some times. However, when we did manage to find some cool spots, it was rather enjoyable and it is truly stunning, especially when you look up and see all of the beautiful artworks on the ceiling. We are on the way to the Sistine Chapel. I am not allowed to film inside, so unfortunately I won't be able to film for you. Maybe I'll take a picture and insert it, but I can't film, so. <laughs> this area down here is finally air conditioned. Oh, it feels so nice. So far, so good, but I'm very excited to see the Sistine Chapel. That's what we've been most anticipating, you can say. I can you to find a piece of Russia in Italy. <laughs> That's very cute. Uh -huh. I found some Chagall in the Vatican. No idea that this would be here. This is in the more contemporary sections. So there we have it. The interesting thing about Chagall is, of course, he was born in Russia. So of course I couldn't film inside the Sistine Chapel. I did sneak a picture as you would have seen earlier. However, it was a highlight of visiting the Vatican Museum. We are here having a trapezino. Mm. <laughs> Instead of tramezino, which is sandwich, trapezino, which is like a pizza. Mm. My favorite flavor is the cacciatore. Oh, it smells like white wine. And then we also have this one with doppio panna, so it's kind of like the inside of a burrata, and a liche, so it's the little fish on top, but it's good. Do you like it? <laughs> White wine chicken. Delicious. Yeah. So this is where we are. Just right outside the Vatican, so I highly recommend after you do that tour. Old Bridge Gelateria. Yummy! So far Delicious. so good. <laughs> I have ricotta pistacchio, that's always my favorite, and sapori di Sicilia, and Nikita got similar ones, but also caramelata, which is delicious, he said. Cheers! When standing in this exact spot in front of San Pietro, you can see all of the columns line up perfectly to form a single row, as opposed to when you're not standing there, they look scattered. It's very cool. You might also notice that long lineup. After about an hour's wait, we were finally inside the beautiful church. Once inside, we were admiring La Pieta by Michelangelo, as well as the burial place of San Pietro, the Apostle of Jesus. So this is where St. Peter's tomb is housed. It's very beautiful, and the church itself is mesmerizing. It's mesmerizing. Yeah, mesmerizing. I have never been in a bigger place like this. <laughs> Built in the 4th century by Roman Emperor Constantine the Great, the construction of the church began in 1506 and was completed in 1626, designed principally by Bramante, Michelangelo, Maderno, and Bernini. St. Peter's is the most renowned work of Renaissance architecture and the largest church in the world by interior measure. It's safe to say we truly enjoyed the church a lot more than the actual museum itself, and entrance is free. We're eating some no, souffles from Suplizio. Delish? Yes. Tasty. Tasty? Cheesy. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> 
called sukli al telefono when it's kind of like as long as a phone cord. You got nothing. This is good. Hey, don't waste the sukli, okay? Mm. Mm. Today we're eating street food all day today. Cappuccino, sukli, and now some pizza Italia. And it's really delicious. So we waited and now we're having a very late breakfast at this pasticceria e dolci di Nona Vincenza. Jules and I came here before quickly for a granita, but now we're having breakfast here. It's nice because there's tables, you can have coffee, cappuccino, all good things. And I'm finally having a casatina. We have a huge cannolo and we have some savory bites like arancini and cipollina. I'm so excited. Out to Canada. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> on the street we're casually walking by after breakfast we're having a little stop in Trastevere because that pasticceria non è Vincenza just take the street straight past it and it will head straight to Trastevere it's actually a good shortcut and we walk past and we see this Martinucci and we just spoke to the one one of the nice people that works here you probably just saw him and they opened up in May so now there's a pasticciotto place Martinucci in Rome we would always get them when we'd go in the south to the Lecce area in Gallipoli. We love Martinucci, even their gelato, so it's right here in Rome. So today we are back at the Airbnb to do a quick change because we really got out very quickly. It was raining all morning, so we had a late start to the day. When the rain looked like it had stopped for a bit, we decided to go out really quickly, just in more casual gear, just to get a quick breakfast. And then before we knew it, it's just a sunny day, it's so hot, so now we came back to change and get ready for the day. So today we should probably be doing the Via del Corso area, which is like the shopping district of Rome. And also the Spanish Steps is in that area. I feel like we've seen almost everything of Rome, like in such a short amount of time, because we're just quickly doo -doo -doo, walking from one direction to the next. So it's been really nice. So let's go and I'll take you there. Hello, so behind me, we are at Piazza del Popolo. Et voila, it's a really cool square or piazza, I should say. And in front of me, I'm looking at the twin churches, churches of Piazza del Popolo. You can see behind attic that they're basically identical. Wow, so cool. And if you go up this way, that's the start of the Villa Borghese Gardens, or basically just one entrance. You just climb up the stairs and you're at Villa Borghese, so you can access that from Piazza del Popolo, and it's beautiful here. Cool. Now we are steps wait, wait. away from the Spanish steps. Steps away from the steps. <laughs> so let's go. Spanish steps, we are currently on them and we're taking a break in the shade. This is a very Roman thing, Gratiqueca Romana. It's like a Roman slushy. Look at all the flavors. Ooh, Roman slushy. We got latte di mandala mm. with coconut. Coconut, yeah. So to the left of Castel Sant'Angelo, if you walk down the steps, you'll have a beautiful view behind you, free of everyone walking around. So we took some nice pictures, and this is the view. Hello! We are in Terrazza Boromini to have a nice aperitivo, a little spritz or a little drink. We're just enjoying our time. It's the perfect day for that. Right, guys? <laughs> Stand up so you can see behind me. Wow. So pretty. Love it. I highly recommend having a cocktail hour at this beautiful Terrazza Boromini for the most stunning views of Rome. It is located steps away from Piazza Navona. And as you can see, we just really enjoyed our evening. I highly recommend getting the Boromini secret drink and enjoying some stuzzichini as you take on the stunning panoramas that Rome has to offer. I highly recommend the Boromini drink. 
Mm. It was very hard not getting a usual spritz, but Nikita got the spritz for me. Yeah, no, she's making fun. And I'm saying, of all the drinks, you're getting a basic spritz, but I'm kidding. That's what we got last time when we were here with Jen and my mom. She's kidding. Mm. She's kidding. Delish. I got a Campari spritz. I got, I don't know what I got. He's got 99 pounds, brother. I'm here with my future brother-in-law, the what one future? that I, I never what asked future? for. <laughs> I'm taking advantage of him now because he's feeling extra chatty, right? I'm not feeling chatty at all. Oh. <laughs> you know, you're going to be on camera. I like it. Beautiful? Yes. Lovely. Especially the sunset. Yeah. You should have said, I thought you were going to say especially this view and it was going to be me. He's a little poop. I thought he was going to say, it's beautiful, especially, especially my fiance, Janelle. You said this one. All jokes aside, as you can see, we really did enjoy our time up here at Terrazza Boromini. I highly recommend checking out a terrace and having a drink on a rooftop in Rome because it just feels so iconically Rome. It is the thing to do, especially during sunset hour, and this is one of my favorite terraces. As I said, I highly recommend booking ahead of time as they book up quite fast. And if it happens to be full, I do also recommend checking out another favorite called the Court Rome. But no matter where you end up, just make sure you're in good company taking on these unforgettable, breathtaking views of the Eternal City. We just had our nice aperitivo at Terrazza Boromini. And now we're in Piazza Navona, my favorite piazza. Well, one of my favorite piazzas of Rome. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Today we have our Colosseum day and Nikita and I are going to a pasticceria that I really like so I'll take you there. So this is a fragolina, this is a maritozzo con panna and this is a fagatini con ricotta. This is like filled with ricotta, oh my gosh. Mm. I'm so excited. Mm. So as you can see, these pastries were so delicious. We picked them up at the Regoli Pasticceria right next door, and we brought them into the bar so that we can enjoy them with a nice coffee. I was really trying to wait for Nikita and the coffees, but as you can see, I couldn't resist. Let's see what he thinks about these delicious baked goods. Oh my God. Delicious, eh? <laughs> So we just ate at that Regoli Pasticceria. Right next door is a Regoli Cafe, so you can get your coffee as well as some maritozzi. We got some things from the pasticceria, so from the bake shop. So we got maritozzi, we got a fragolina, which was a wild strawberry tart. And we got this thing called fagottino with ricotta. Fagottino is kind of like a like milfoy style cake with ricotta. It was just incredible. How was it? Delish. <laughs> I loved all the pastries. Yes. Uh, I can't even single out a particular one. I think that for me, maybe that uh, layered cake with ricotta inside was really good. Yes. But uh, I loved every one of them, including the strawberry tart. Yes, and it was your first time trying a maritozzo. Mm. Yeah. And it was delicious. Pure cream <laughs> and a nice soft bun. <laughs> yes, and I said he did good for his first time trying a maritozzo because I heard that that's like the best maritozzo in Rome at this Regoli Pasticceria. Really good. And yeah, it's basically a brioche bun with whipped cream inside, but it's not sweet whipped cream. It's just delicious. So highly recommend. We walked all the way there. It was about a 45 minute walk. Now we're going to the Colosseum, which from the Colosseum, it's about, I would say 10 to 15 minutes away. Today we're going inside the Colosseum. Nikita's never been inside. I haven't been inside since 2010 when I did like a Kentucky tour when I was really young. So I'm actually excited to go back in and Jules and Attic are not with us today because they didn't want to go inside. <laughs> so we're just on our own. So let's go. We're in the Colosseum. Yeah, these steps are steep. So now we're on the upstairs level. As was to be expected, the Colosseum was packed with tourists just like us who are very eager to get inside and explore the history that surrounded them. It was incredible. Just make your way up to the second floor and you'll be rewarded. Ta -da! We are here, we can see. Colosseum, how it used to be. It's actually very cool. Hi. Taking it all in, enjoying yes. the view. It's the view that matters. Yes, beautiful. Trying to imagine myself being here. So this was my second time in the Colosseum and this was Nikita's first time. We decided to do it without a guide and sometimes you actually did overhear the tour guides explaining things. So I did include a clip of that for your listening pleasure. 
And a day at the Guardian Games always went the same way. There was always the same program. So in the morning were the animal hunts. So they'd bring the animals up in the elevators. And everywhere you can see like a square bit in the underground with some like little white bits sticking up, some white stunks. Yeah. That is the location of an elevator. Oh. Yeah. So so the guide was explaining that there were elevators to actually raise the animals into the arena. So essentially in the morning there were the animals, sometimes fighting each other and sometimes fighting other gladiators. During lunchtime this guide was explaining that there were public executions. And then in the afternoon there were the gladiator games where they would reenact a battle, usually something that actually happened. I overheard this guide saying that the movie Gladiator, there was of course some bits that were exaggerated, but some things were actually quite true to life and what really did happen. So this really did inspire me to want to watch Gladiator all over again. So even though we didn't have a guide, it was actually fun to overhear some of their insights and conversations into what actually took place in the Colosseum. Nikita loves touching the walls, right? Because you're touching history. It's so fascinating. Like how, how old this was, how many people came through here, just incredible. So the Colosseum, done. Our time inside the Colosseum was incredible. I forgot actually how beautiful it was inside. I hadn't been in over a decade, so it was really nice to see all over again. And now we are on the way to the Roman Forum. We definitely weren't expecting to have such an unobstructed view of the Colosseum itself, so we definitely took advantage of this. Now we are in the Roman Forum, Il Foro Romano, and we're browsing, or touring I should say, this area on our own, no guide, just at our leisure, and it's so nice! Stunning, huh? Woo! <laughs> under an olive tree right now and we are exploring the Roman Forum and the Palatine Hill. Is Nikita? <laughs> oh, you're chilling under an olive under tree? Under an olive tree. Beautiful. It's so cool here and when you enter you have like an amazing panorama of the Colosseum. Yeah. Nobody around you. So we took advantage. We took a lot of pictures and videos together. It was really nice so we're actually really enjoying ourselves and even though it's a hot day you do find some freshness in the shade. You do, of course. And we're filling up our water bottles in the, in the Nassoni as well, so... Everywhere we see. Everywhere we can. Yeah. So see? let's go. I'm telling you right now, I honestly don't remember this being so beautiful. It sort of feels like we're in like a an ancient villa, doesn't it? Yes. Like we're exploring the grounds of like... It's just incredible just to see so much history all around you. We're at our own leisurely pace. I guess we don't know as much as we would if we were on a tour, but I like this because you can just read. Explore. And explore at your own pace, and it's just really nice. So honestly, I highly recommend doing the Colosseum on the inside, and of course, the Roman Forum. Especially if you've never seen it before. Yes. <laughs> Love you. So this was a stadium-like area where some of the emperors would walk around. How incredible. I just love these Roman trees as well. They're just stunning. You see them everywhere. They're so beautiful. So even if you're touring the Roman Forum without a guide, there are still lots of little indicators as to what exactly you're looking for. We learned some fun facts, such as how Julius Caesar was cremated right here. So we just finished seeing the Colosseum and the Roman Forum. As you would have seen, it was an incredible experience. I highly recommend it. And Nikita was pointing out that tickets to the Colosseum, I think they're about 15 euros or so. And for an extra four euros, you can have access to the Roman Forum, which I highly recommend. You are walking a lot on these cobblestone roads. I definitely recommend running shoes for sure. And I do recommend doing this. It's a great experience and it's a really cool way to honestly be in an open air museum where you truly feel like you're transported back into time. It kind of gives you goosebumps just to imagine like who walked these streets? Who was here? We're literally walking through history. So it's quite incredible. So I highly recommend this for sure. Speaking of historical sites, we happened to stumble across this film set or TV set or commercial set. We have no idea, but it seemed that they were filming something of a historical piece and it was so fun to watch the actors and actresses. Jewish produce. Correct. 
And now I'm taking Nikita to eat a delicious pastry. Because <laughs> in every area I know where you can get a good pastry. So I was like, oh my gosh, we're walking by the Jewish area. So we're gonna have something from Bocione. And this is the famous ricotta crostata cake. I believe these ladies were offered money for this cake and they would not give the recipe, so it's really delicious. So if you like ricotta and cakes, pies, tarts, whatever, you'll love it. What do you think? I, I'm mesmerized. Yeah. We're just walking into random corners and finding really cool things that we relate <laughs> to. Uh, very interesting. Yes. So we just went to Bocione. I got a cake for Nikita and I and a cake for Jules and Adek to share. I got them ricotta cioccolato and as ricotta biscioli or, or ciliegi, cherries, so yum. Nikita got a delicious lava. This has, I think, bacala. Very delicious. Super good and something different to get since we were in the Jewish quarter, so yum. Love it. Tastes like this. What really are you eating now? Uh, lamb, chicken, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Just mixed. Whoa. So we were right in the area, as you see, and this is what I was talking to you about. This is the ricotta with cherry, and Jules has the ricotta with chocolate. Mmm, mm. delicious, guys, from Bocione. Highly recommend this spot as usual. <laughs> and if you like this, you'll love the pasticciotti from Martinucci that hopefully mm. we'll have tomorrow. Because it's very similar. Mm. Honestly, the crust is very similar. This is like a giant it's version. Right yeah. Hello. Hey, guys. Buonasera. Tonight, we are together once again, and we are eating at Da Enzo al 29. <laughs> the line is very long. We got here about, what An would you hour say? 6.30. 6.30-ish? now, yeah. I think a little past 6.30 and the line was already so long. We missed the first oh round gosh. of people, but we will be in the next round of people so to get waiting. in. We're taking a walk, me and Lee, just to get some a breeze. Yeah, so we're taking a nice little walk while the guys wait in line for a bit, for a few minutes, and we just thought it was a good chance to pop in and say hi. And it's our second last night here in Italy. I'm so sad. <laughs> this trip kind of like, it felt long, but it also did fly by. It like, flew by. So, as per usual, you And know. the Enzo's opened today for the first time since they're on their Ferragosto break. So we're lucky enough to be able to catch yeah, it just before we leave. day, because they were closed yeah. for almost a month. I know, wow. Since August 14th, I think, or the 15th. <sighs> That's insane. Yeah. So yeah, so we're into September and we're going to be eating well tonight. Fingers crossed. To start, we have the burrata. Mm, it's delicious. Nikita and I are sharing the cacio e pepe. The cacio e pepe. Mm, what they're really, we're actually so deliciously known for. It's amazing here. And the fettuccine. Uh, more wine. Always more wine for these guys. Our table is always looking very similar. Adek got the same as me, as usual. You copied me. <laughs> No more fragolina, but they have frutta di bosco, so mixed berries with the same mascarpone mousse. Usually this mousse is topped with little baby wild strawberries, which are so good, but today it was frutta di bosco. Enjoy! <laughs> Enjoy! <laughs> it's an experience. Yeah, the, the whole thing is an experience. It is, it is. While you wait, yeah, yeah. While you drink, yeah. after that you sit down, the burrata was insane. <laughs> the lights went off and everyone's singing happy birthday. No, the lights all went out. The power went out. This adds to your experience, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's so much fun. Today is a walking record, 30,000 steps. Whoa! As you can see, Nikita and I really walked a lot. So good morning! As you saw us here the other day, Martinucci, now we're finally coming for breakfast. Even though we tried a passeggiato, so delicious. It's our last day here in Rome, which is very bittersweet for us, so at least we're having a sweet send-off with this nice delicious breakfast. We have a nice lunch later on and I'm so excited to be here and to try a passeggiato again. This is classic Lecceze of our region. And so delicious, so yeah. Let's eat and enjoy. Canada. Ciao, guys. Ciao, Leslie. 
Ah, Adesso apre pure a Nord Italia. Ah, ah, no, sì. ah ok. Ok, come to Martin Uchi, it's amazing. Pasticciotti, leggete. Best, best. After a lot of sweet treats, Jules and I did some shopping and we stumbled upon this Cafe Marcel that has the cutest bags of Rome and they are all designed and illustrated by this couple. They were so nice so I told them I would shout them out in my vlog. So definitely check it out. It's right near Piazza Navona. Today, for the first time ever, we are eating at Roscioli Salumeria. Ooh, so we are trying the restaurant version for the first time after being fans of the cafe, yes, the forno. This is the first time actually we've come we're to the their restaurant. location so much, but the restaurant we've been yet to eat at. And it's our last day here. Oh my god, I'm so sad. But we were just saying how we had a wonderful trip and it's just been beautiful and like perfect. So. We couldn't have asked for a better trip and honestly we have memories to last a lifetime. Yeah, so it was so nice doing it with Lee and Akita yeah. and Anik. It's like, it's very great. Roshole in this beautiful cellar downstairs. I didn't even realize they had a downstairs area, so... Bon appetit! I love it. Yes. Try the pickled stuff. Yeah, yeah. And the ricotta. It's a pickled vegetable. With oh, ricotta. Good. Just to start as like an amuse bouche. That's cute. Mm. I can't leave Rome without trying an artichoke. This is a crostacea alla romana, so it's stewed. It's not like the Jewish artichoke, which is fried. I prefer the stewed ones better. So let's try. The outer pieces are harder. Let's try. <laughs> Tasty. And we have the burrata. You can see that it's already been cut, and you can see all the cream. Come on over. Come on over. Aww, okay. This guy gets so shy. Cheap? <laughs> 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 Delicious, yeah, cheap. Delicious? Crunchy. Yeah. Mm. I love it. The crunchy crunchy. But so flavorful. So Nikita has carbonara, as does everyone else at the table. Except yeah. for? I wanted to try the Grisha to show Nikita what it is, but it's very similar to carbonara, but without the egg. So Mmm, Grisha. Delicious. We have these little wine cookies, which I absolutely love. These red wine cookies. Usually you dip them in wine, but they gave us some chocolate to dip them in. How delish. Yum. That's a granita al cafe at Santo Stacchio. Santo Stacchio, delicious. Mmm, look, the panna is on the bottom and on the top. Yum. I think you call this sotto sopra. The only thing I'm not gonna miss from Rome is this staircase. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know. You don't even know. I feel like we're on like the fourth floor yeah. and the guys have to do this with luggage, okay? This is really crazy, but it's our last night, so maybe I will miss it after all. <laughs> Who knows? So this is one of my favorite secret spots of Rome. I don't know how secret it is really, but it feels very secretive because there is never a soul in sight, it seems. And this is Sant'Ivo alla Sapienza, and it is a Roman Catholic church built in 1642. And I absolutely just love this courtyard. It was designed by Borromini, and it really makes an impression when you can find a beautiful quarter of Rome without any tourists. Now we're going to meet up with Jules and Attic. We tried to make it into see a church, but we didn't make it on time. So okay. Jules and Attic are on their way. We're going to meet up at the Pantheon. And then from there, the Trevi Fountain for one more time, right? Ta -da. Ta -da. We're waiting for Jules and Attic. We said we would meet by the Pantheon. What a nice meeting spot. <laughs> and now when it comes to vlogging, sometimes I don't know how I'm vlogging, what I'm doing, because I have to vlog, take pictures, videos, Instagram, full of the works, but if you want to know any of the good places, restaurants we have to eat, if you kind of want more of a list, I have them saved in my story highlights on Instagram. So be sure to follow me there, at La Dolce Lisa. Right? <laughs> Just soaking up our last night in the beautiful, eternal city. Look, Jules is here. Hi guys, it's our last night and we're very sad. I know. <laughs> I said it's bittersweet, right? It's bittersweet. We, just, yes. we miss Luna, we miss all of our family back home, but we're, we had an amazing trip. So. Yeah, it feels good, it feels complete. You know, we don't feel like we're missing out, so yes. It's been so wonderful to be yes. here together. Beautiful.
And now I gathered the group together to make a final wish at the Fontana di Trevi. One, two, three. Woo! Did you make a wish? Yes. The Trevi Fountain is always a zoo. As we were taking our pictures, very hectically. I got drenched. <laughs> this kid was like using water. He splashed my whole butt. It's very refreshing, but literally my butt is wet and I walk around with a wet butt. We did our shots, we did our footage, and hopefully we have some good pictures. It's so hectic, it's so hectic. This is actually really good at sparkling wine. Mariuccia for our last night in Rome. Guys, we have another potato croquet. This time we have it with stracciatella cheese and prosciutto crudo. Enjoy! Bon appetit! Adi got his little fried pizza rolls as well and the same potato croquet to share. I want to see that potato inside. Mm. It's just like the popper of paparazzi. It's him after a couple of drinks. <laughs> Babe, yours looks really delicious. Oh I'm not God. even the way Look at ours. Oh my gosh. I'm trying this again. I feel like I've tried this before, but it's all the rage. So here we go. Mmm. Mmm. It's really good. Yeah. Wow. Have a bite, Joel. Pretty good. Mm. It's actually really good. Try, try. This worker at Frigidarium was so nice and it was really nice to be able to speak to him and talk about our mutual love for Zabayane. I completely forgot you can get panna with Zabayone. So Zabayone panna. Oh my god, the crema sbagliato is really good. Yeah, I have a feeling that, you know. The flavor that I got is the crema sbagliato and it's so good. It's like, it's coffee, nocciola and meringue pieces inside. Zabayone cream on top and I also got peanut butter flavor. Mm. You just had a peanut butter pe Amazing! <laughs> okay, so today for breakfast we got these delicious pasticciotti. They're lecese, they're from the Puglia region just like us. This is the crema and amarena flavor. So black cherry and cream filled. This is like double chocolate. So even the chocolate little pastry and the chocolate inside. And then there's just an extra gendria one. They didn't have the ricotta ones, but we took these yesterday as well. So, so let's guys. eat our final breakfast in Italy. This trip went by so fast, but we hope you enjoyed the vlog and everything. And, and don't forget to follow Julia's channel because she's vlogging yes, as I well. Vlog too, a different so. perspective. So love you More guys. More Italy goodness. Mm, look what's inside the chocolate one. Delicious, rich chocolate cream. Mm. Our trip has come to an end. As we keep saying, it's bittersweet, but we are so happy to have been back in Italy after years of being away because of the current climate, but it's so nice to have been back. I think we did an incredible trip. We traveled so well together. We saw so many beautiful places. We saw the, a lot of the north of Italy, which was gorgeous. God willing, next year I'll do the south. But until then, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. Ciao from Roma and Italia. From beautiful Venice, Italy, where Giulia got proposed to, to the lovely Lake Como, where we had the most incredible time, to Florence and Tuscany, where we did an unforgettable wine tour, and now ending our lovely trip in Rome. Thank you so much for watching my Italy 2022 vlogs with my love Nikita, my sister Jules, and her now fiance Arik. Until next time, arrivederci. Thank you for watching, and please thumbs up if you enjoyed.